there, welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations and you probably guessed, this is the next piece that we're gonna be working on. A couple of things that we need to do first though. One is definitely a deep cleaning, but we also have to deal with the fact it's got fabric lining in there. Now, I don't know why, um, it looks like it all just pulls out. The bottom piece is painted, but I have to get rid of this kind of, it's not even velvet, it's kind of like a stretch acrylic-y something. So, we need to get rid of that. Um, and I need to clean in here anyway. The other piece is that the box is on top don't really work for me. So behind the scenes, that's what's gonna be taking place. A nice deep clean. I'm gonna get the wood fill on here and sanded these boxes removed because um, they're just a little bit weird. You know, I don't know how many people use trinket boxes up there anymore, um, but they also don't look like they fit. They look like they were added on. So I don't need them. I'm gonna get rid of them. And uh, once we're ready to go, I'm gonna take the hardware off and uh, I'll come back and I'll show you what we're gonna do. This piece I'm specifically pulled from the back stash to be able to use with one of the new recycled decoupage papers and I'm very excited to get started on this. This is all washed. Now, the top has not been cleaned yet because I'm still waiting to sand. I need the wood filler to dry. But while I'm waiting for that to happen, I can carry on with this piece because we're gonna decoupage on the front. Now, the piece that I have is 30 by 20. Um, so I'm gonna start it here at the top line and it'll go down to the bottom to maybe about two, three inches from the bottom. It's not, it's gonna come over about this far. No, it's, I think I, I counted 30 and it's going to be less, but I'm using these lines as the middle marker, right? So if I'm looking at 20 inches, it's going to come to about just past this middle knob here, right? It'll come to about here, 10 by 10 ish sort of idea. Yeah. Just before the knob here. So it'll be to about here. So it's gonna be kind of centered here. So a couple of things about the decoupage paper that I'm going to do um, to get ready for it is I am not gonna tear the top edge because it's gonna be right along this upper edge of the um, drawers. So I'm gonna leave that flat. But the edges here, I don't wanna leave them flat right? Nice and straight because it's going to be, it's just going to look pieced right in there. And I want it to look a little bit more organic. I want it to fit into the piece a little bit more. So I'm going to tear those edges so they are not smooth. And the same along the bottom because it's going to be about two or three inches higher than the bottom of the dresser. So the three edges I'm going to tear. The big piece of decoupage paper, and I was so excited to get this in. I love this pattern. Now I'm gonna iron this um, and tear the edges, but it is going to be the big Roy Cycled Owl. Isn't that awesome? So we're going to start off right now, because the dresser's not ready for it. We're gonna start off by painting this white. So I'm going to get white painted. I'm not gonna paint right out to the edges, just as far over as I need to because I just want the paper to have the white background. So I'm not worried about painting the rest of the dresser yet. I'm just giving, um, I'm just giving my owl a little bit of a background so that it can show up. So I'm gonna be getting it. I'm using beadboard by DIY. I'm using all DIY paint on this project. But I'm gonna get two coats of the DIY paint 
on everything that's going to get decoupaged. So I need to get this base coat on, let it dry, and then get another coat of the beadboard on so that we've got a nice background for our owl so it can show up. So I'm gonna get the two coats on this, let it dry. I'm gonna get this sanded ultimately and um, washed off, smoothed out so that uh, when we come back to decoupage, this part at least is all ready for the decoupaging. Okay, so our white paint has all dried and what I want to do is prep it for attaching our decoupage paper. So we are going to use a decoupage medium. Now I'm using um, Mod Podge because I have a big, huge container of it. Otherwise I would go and get um, some uh, crystal patina, some crystal clear chandelier from DIY off the shelf, or use your preferred, this lid is a mess. Um, use your preferred decoupage medium. Any of them are gonna work, right? So if you've got one that you know, you love, you're comfortable with, use that. And what I'm gonna do is paint all of the white area and I'm gonna be fairly generous with the decoupage medium. I'm gonna add enough on there, but then I'm going to let it dry. So we're gonna be using the iron on method because I'm going to be attaching the whole sheet and I want it to have an opportunity to dry relatively smoothly. I'm not going to agonize over it because I am going to do some distressing and this piece is going to have a lot happening to it. So I'm not too concerned if I have some ripples, but Overall, overall, I'd like it to be fairly smooth. So I'm gonna get all of this on and I'm going to let it dry and then we'll come back and we'll start attaching our paper to it. Our decoupage medium is dry. And what I am going to be looking at doing is just roughly attaching this onto the dresser. I don't have to have a perfect fit. I just need kind of an approximation um, for me to carry on. Now, what I have done is I still have just a little bit of a marking at the top in the middle. So I can sort of line this up because I know it's coming across here and I can just roughly center it. And just to have that, it's so cute, isn't it? I just love this. All right, so what I'm going to do is use the iron-on method to decoupage this. You can see kind of those rough edges so that we can kind of feather in some of our paint. To do this, and I'm just waiting for this to get a little bit warm, I have some parchment paper, and I'm putting this over as I look to iron this on. The iron is gonna reactivate that Mod Podge, that glue in essence. So the parchment paper protects my iron. So if there's glue that's coming up through the paper, it's not gonna stick all over my iron. And it also means that I'm also serving to protect my paper. I'm not looking to necessarily decoupage this perfectly in place. All I'm looking to do right now is to get it to roughly hold in place so that I can then go and cut my paper. So you can see already that this is starting to stick. That's what I'm after. So let me give you an idea what I'm going to do is get this all just lightly stuck down and then I'm going to take my X-Acto knife, my sharp knife, and I'm going to cut around all of those open gaps. 
Then I will pop out those drawers and just iron each of them individually so that I can get a really good seal on it. Doing it this way means I don't have to pre-cut all those squares, trying to get them all perfectly lined up. This way, it all lines up perfectly, and then I can simply cut them, cut them apart, get them to adhere more fully, and then put the drawers back in place. So much easier this way. This is also, for me, way easier than trying to attach this wet, right? Where I'm, I'm painting on some of the decoupage medium, rolling this down, trying to hold it all up while I'm trying to paint more decoupage medium underneath it. And that's just crazy making. So this is so much easier in my mind. You can see that it's already adhering as we kind of use the heat to reactivate that glue. So here. Easily cut it out. And then can just remove that drawer and then I can just more fully adhere that paper. Now I can really do a good job ensuring that it adheres. I'll do the next drawer, pull them out, and then I can go back and all these crossbars, I can do a much better job as well. But now all of my decoupage is perfectly flat. It's all in the places that I need it without a lot of hassle. Really, this is, this is just, in my mind, the easiest way to do this. Now, when you find that you are working on these front edges, once you've done that, you're gonna find that there's a little bit of a gap of paper, um, depending upon how big the space was between the drawer top and this bar. So all that you do is take a sanding block, run it against that edge, and it will just trim that paper edge nice and clean for you. Now you can see Oh my goodness, there we go. All my paper lines up perfectly doing it this way. And the nice thing about it is that once I have ironed this, doing that sanding to be able to cut away the excess little piece of paper is perfect. And don't forget to do that around the drawers too, because sometimes there may be some excess there. So you want to have a nice tight fit. And then I do make sure after I've sanded that, I go over it with my, with my paper and my iron, curving my iron over the edges to make sure that all those edges are attached because if you've got a little bit of lift happening, it's gonna be all the edges. So I pay extra close attention to all of those edges to make sure they're on there nice and firm. Now, this is open. It means it's just paper. I haven't sealed it, um, so any painting is going to impact it. What I want to do, um, again, I'm likely gonna be doing some sanding and distressing of this afterward and you know, if I get any raising, so I don't want, I'm gonna be using a fair bit of water on this piece. I need to seal it. To start with, I don't wanna put um, a ton of sealer on it. I don't want to um, take my brush and, or sponge and, and do a polyacrylic right over top of it. What I am gonna take is a clear polyacrylic spray. I'm using Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch. You could use whatever kind you have. But all I'm going to do, and that's it. I'm gonna lightly mist it. And I'm gonna do that. I'm doing this at the end of the day because it's stinky <laughs> and it bugs my head. Um, but I'm gonna give that about a minute to kind of dry. I'm gonna do another coat, give it a minute, do another coat. So I'm going to, and then I'm gonna run. <laughs> I'm going home for the evening. 
but I'm gonna get about four super, super light coats on this just so that um, the paper is kind of protected, but doing it really lightly like that means I don't get any of the bubbling, which is what I want. I want this to stay nice and flat. If I end up getting some of that bubbling happening, I will let everything dry. I will put my parchment paper over top and I will iron it again. Now, it means it will reactivate any polyacrylic that's on the top. You definitely need this because it will start to kind of stick. You can slide that off easily, but I mean, this is already dry. It's ready for another coat. About three or four of these at least before I go. So then I can carry on tomorrow with the painting, which is gonna be exciting. This has had all of its protective coating put on it. And now it's time to start painting the rest of the dresser. I envision doing a lot of color on this. And in fact, kind of playing up the dripping look that's on here with the rest of the piece. But I want to get a bit of a neutral base onto um, the main body of this. So I'm going to be using Sandy Blonde by DIY. The top, however, is going to be in Bohemian Blue, which let me see if I have something I can open it with here, back here. Oh my goodness, tools all over the place. So this is like a really deep, 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 rich teal color. So I'm gonna go dark on the top and down by the bottom because I'm gonna be dripping a lot of that color down anyway. And I wanna kind of unify the piece, but, um, but the body is gonna start off being this really kind of neutral sort of color. So we're gonna start with this, which is the closest to kind of even mimic, you know, some of what's happening over here. You can see already as this paint has started to dry, I mean, this is a little bit more yellow, but by the time that we start to add more colors to it, we're going to, um, it's all going to blend. That's the idea. So I wanted something a little softer. So all that I'm gonna do on these edges is just kind of feather that color in so that again, I'm not getting a harsh stop start line. And uh, when I start layering some other colors in there, that will help. So what I'm looking at doing is getting these base colors on and then we'll come back and start playing. We're gonna, we're gonna add stuff. We're gonna, we're gonna go a little funky, a little colorful on this one because we wanna play with this pattern. Okay, gang, we're gonna start dripping on this. Now, couple things to start. First of all, it's gonna look kind of freaky. This is just our first pass. So we're just getting color on this. This is our first pass. We've got more to happen, but it's not for the faint of heart. A, a, a Mr. Water Bottle. We're gonna use a lot of water because we're gonna be moving the paint, but you don't want it to be a harsh spray. No, we've got more steps coming. We're probably gonna be adding more color after this. When we see this tomorrow, it's gonna to look paler. DIY paint dries lighter than um, it is once we seal it. But what I have here is I have the same Bohemian Blue that I used on the top, but I have a lot of water in it. So it's kind of as a wash, all right? Just seeing some places I missed that I'd like to get. All right, so it's more of a wash. Then I have, well, I have some Summer Crush, which is a bit of an orange. That's a DIY paint as well. And then I have some pigment powders. So these are from DIY. This is like really intense color. So I have kind of the yellow, the pinky tone, and the green. What I'm gonna be doing when I go to apply them is I take a brush, I'll dip it in my water, dip it in the pigment powder, and then apply it. And then we're gonna go to town it's gonna look kind of freaky. I'm gonna do one side at a time, just so you know. Um, I'm gonna take the blue, 
right across here just to start to get going. Get that in there. And I'm gonna start here and you'll see, you'll see how it goes. So first I wanna get some of my um, other colors on here, okay? So a little bit of some of these pigments. That's a bit of a blob there. And I got to tell you, there's no real rhyme or reason <laughs> to this. It's just, you know, we're just getting it wherever. So there's some green. I'm going to put the lid on before I kick this over and get this powder everywhere. I'm going to get some yellow. Let's get bit of this. Oh, there's some water. And then a little bit of the pink. You're likely coming back in with more color later, but let's get a little bit on there now. And a bit of orange. Okay, looks very artistic, does it not? Now, our wash. So I'm just going to be Dabbing this across first. I'm gonna get it in a couple of other spots so I have enough to get to the bottom. And then we're gonna mist. We're just gonna let those colors start to run. I will clean the drawers out later, so don't start worrying. So I do have some coming over So here, I just need to get some of these breaks. Okay, and then I kind of mop up around the bottom here. I take a cloth and just get some of the excess. I'm on a drop cloth, but you know, there's only so much a drop cloth can do. And I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna let this set up like this. And you'll see that I started to kind of push it over a little bit over onto my paper so that I built in a little bit of continuity there. 
here's where I started a little bit of that line down here. I'm going to bring that up a bit and then soften it. And then uh, we'll be able to start adding a little bit more color here and there tomorrow. Anybody scared yet? <laughs> All right, this is had overnight to dry. And I uh, don't know how you're feeling about it. I'm loving it. But I do know that this is lighter than it's going to look. Once I add on the wax, this is going to go darker. So I do want to um, lighten it up a little bit. And I have this color, cake batter. Um, by DIY. What I am doing is dropping a little bit of it into a cup with water. So I want to lighten a little bit, but I don't want it to be um, full strength paint. I still want some translucency with it. And so I'm mixing this up and I'm just thinking I might want it. Mm -hmm. Nothing beside me. Okay, I'm actually gonna lighten it up a little bit. So let me grab some white. All right, so I have a little bit of beadboard and I'm just gonna add a bit of that in there as well. And don't be afraid to, you know, if you're looking at a color and saying, oh, that's a little bit darker than I want, or it's not as dark as I want. So you can see that kind of softened it up a little bit. And I have a really, really grungy chip brush. So that's perfect. I'm gonna take that chip brush, dip it in lightly, but I'm gonna offload a bunch of it. And I'm just gonna start kind of Roughly adding a little bit of this in strategically in some spots, just here and there. So, you know, I'm looking at adding some of it, but very loosely, but just kind of lightening up here and there, adding a bit of that brightness to the piece. So I'm using very little paint. There's more paint on my drop cloth than there is on my, on my piece doing a little bit of dry brushing you can see that i'm going in multiple directions but there's nothing about this piece that's pristine so having a big block of of blue or something just looks a little bit too much so i'm gonna kind of feather this in all over wherever i think it just needs a little bit of lightness. This is gonna dry very quickly because it doesn't have um, a lot of paint to it. And then we're going to do some sanding. Now, after I sand, because this is the last coat, I may find that I add a little bit of it back in again, and that's okay too. Now I'm going to lightly sand it. So, when I added all that water, there were some spots of the decoupage paper that bubbled up a little bit. Um, if you leave that, it will go flat again. It's just some of the paper stretching a bit. However, it might mean that some of the glue has let go. So um, lightly sanding it might mean I get some wear spots here and there. I'm okay with that. I'm looking more than distressing, although I'll do a little bit of light distressing on this, it doesn't need a heavy distressing because it already looks distressed. But I'm just looking to smooth it, right? All those layers, it's got a little bit of a rough texture. I'm just looking to take some of that, that roughness off. So I have 220 grit sandpaper just wrapped around an old sanding block. And I'm just looking to do that. Just that much makes a textural difference. So. I'm gonna do a light sanding of this piece and then we're gonna start waxing. And I haven't decided exactly what's happening with the waxing yet beyond we're starting with clear and then going from there.
there will be some colored waxes used. I want you to see how much this changes when we add wax. So I've got some clear wax from DIY. I, I generally use chip brushes to apply my wax. You can get a big honkin' wax brush and use that. Um, I just find it easier to clean the wax out. I can get down into the crevices. When the bristles get really ratty, I cut them off. So I use this to get into the nooks and crannies. It's just a personal preference. So I've got DIY clear wax down here. And I'm gonna start waxing this piece first when my brush is still kind of clean because as much as I've dusted this off, I'm gonna pick up some of the color. So you're not gonna see much difference here, but you can already see it, it pull a bit more of the color from it as we start to add the wax. And again, because we do have some paint drips on this and um, So you can see, I'm, I'm not gentle with my, with my wax brushes, which is probably why I use chip brushes. I do have wax brushes, and Lord knows I sell them in the store. But you know what, keeping it real here, guys, I don't use them. <laughs> and I do tell people that when they come to buy them. All right, now we wanna start getting this done. And you can see with that DIY paint, it dried a lot lighter and now you're starting to see those colors start to pop. And what I'm going to do is get the entire piece waxed, take a look, clear waxed. I'm not gonna rub it back, so I'm not taking the excess off yet. I wanna take a look at it. And then what I do have down here on the floor is I have black wax, I have brown wax, I have gold wax. I have turquoise wax I can grab, and I have my pigment powders. So those same powders that I used with water on this, I could then use those pigment powders in my wet wax. So, I don't think off the top of my head that I'm adding a ton more color to this, but I don't know. It may end up going into a couple of strategic spots, but Already you can see that color coming back. When it comes to dark wax, I prefer the black, dark waxes, black waxes, I prefer using a stencil brush. So I get very little on my, my brush and then I use the lid to kind of wipe it off onto. And then I'm gonna use it. And you can see how quickly that starts to add some aging and some additional color. So I'm doing kind of edges and wherever I want to add a little bit of interest. If I think there's too much, I wipe it on the, uh, the drop cloth, which I just did. Here I'm just kind of doing some of the the edging of the molding to add a little bit more age, a little bit more depth to it. So I'm gonna be adding the dark wax all over this piece. Then I'm gonna be taking some golden roll and I'm going to just add it. I'm taking, again, really ratty chip brush, dipping it into the golden rule and then, oh, I don't have a little lid for you. Okay, I have a little piece of plastic. <laughs> and I'm going to dry brush that. And I'm gonna take this and just kind of run it over some of the elements. So giving a little bit of that, that golden highlight to the piece. And then we let this dry completely before we buff. Part of the beauty of using DIY paint, and let's face it, because we use so much water, it's messy. So you're gonna get paint that is seeped onto the edges, but it's reactivated with water because we sealed the front. We didn't seal the top and the sides. So I'm able to take my putty knife, and if there's 
big amounts there, I can kind of scrape them off, but I can just take my wet towel, wet rags, baby wipes, whatever you got going, and I can just wipe away and clean it up. I do that to the outside of the drawers, and then I do it to the inside rims as well, so that there's no problem with them sliding easily in future. All right, I had to race it. My hair's still wet. <laughs> I had to come into the shop just to be able to buff and finish this piece. I just couldn't let it go and uh, leave it. So I'm here on a Sunday just to be able to do that. Um, so a couple of things. This has been buffed um, and I use a little Milwaukee buffer because arthritis in the shoulders. So it makes quick work of it, which is great. The hardware. Now, you probably don't remember, but this was the original hardware. And I had thought that once the piece was done, maybe I would be painting this blue, brush it with some gold, see how that goes. But I think it would have looked too heavy on this. There's a lot going on already. And so what I opted for were these little metal ones. Now, they were a little bit more gold than I wanted. So I actually spray painted them with flat soft iron by um, Rust-Oleum. This is from their Metallics line. It's one of my favorites because it's not black, it's not silver, it's not gray, it's not anything. And then I lightly brushed them <laughs> with gold, with the same golden roll that I applied. But they're a different tone entirely. This is more matte, this is more gloss. And I love it because you don't really notice them much. You know, they add a bit, but you don't notice them too much. So I get this might not be everybody's cup of tea, but then when I do something with stripes and harlequins, that's not everybody's cup of tea. Or if I use transfers, not everybody loves transfers or not everybody loves florals. So even when I'm demonstrating something that might not be your thing, think about some of the techniques I used and how you might use that in something. Maybe you would never do a big dresser in using the dripping and the open time with paint that is not all in one, that does not seal, but it may be something that would be perfect on a small footstool or on a candlestick or a small that you're working on. So there's always something to be learned from techniques that might not be what you'd look for in a big piece of furniture because then it's definitely a strong statement of style. Um, but it could be something that's perfect for a different project. So, you know, learning to do leopard print or, you know, in a previous video we did lavender. I did it on the side of a little, little side table. Maybe it's something that you would do on a card, you know? So bear in mind that even when you look at a piece, even if it's not in its entirety your thing, stop and think about what, what are some of the skill sets that or some of the toolkits or some of the, the elements that you could incorporate. We use the pigment powders here. That's a new thing that I haven't really shown you. I mean, I've had them for sale here forever and I've used them uh, creating colored waxes. So that video's here. This is using them in a slightly different way. You could incorporate them like we did here. You could incorporate them, as I mentioned briefly, into the wax layer. So I could have added even more color. I opted not to because I thought there was enough going on. But you could add even more color by adding them just in their dry form into the wet wax when you're applying it. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of elements that I showed you in here that you might be able to pull from and use. Let me know what you think of this one, guys. I love it. It's very much me. <laughs> but I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody likes my channel for, for that matter too, for the same reasons. And that's all okay, but it's, think about what you can learn from it. Even though the entirety might not be you, are there pieces that you can take away and incorporate into what you actually do use? 
Love to hear from you as always. Definitely look forward to seeing you on the next one. And until then, take care. Thank you.